Why, well, good morning. Like I said in the beginning of service, we're starting a new series today, Faith in the Shadows. The kind of premise behind this series is, you know, faith is easy when we're in the sunshine and everything's going well and life seems to be grand and everything's just going along like it should. What do we do when the clouds roll in, when the hard times start happening, when our faith begins to waver because we're filled with fear, because we're filled with doubt, because we're filled with anxiety, and how that can often bring us into a place of despair. That's what we're talking about over the next three weeks today, talking about faith and fear. This week I was reading a story online about a, a young boy who was terrified of going down into the basement at their house. Maybe you had one of those old farmhouses growing up, you know, when you, you had the, the door from the kitchen into the basement, and you'd open it up, and there was that rickety kind of maybe not so sturdy staircase down into the basement. And when you got to the down in the bottom of the basement, it was dark and it was cold and like the water would kept dripping. You could never find where it was. The furnace would like kind of roar and scare you. And there was all those jars of canned fruit and you just don't know what to do with. <laughs> and so of course this boy is scared. He's terrified. He's filled with fear to go into the basement. But one day, his mom is cooking dinner, and, and she tells her son, hey, can, can you go into the basement to go get a can of tomatoes? And he's, he's a little scared. He's like, no, mom, I don't really want to do it. And so this mom kind of leans into him and says, Jesus is with you. He will be where in the basement with you. It's okay. You don't have to fear. So he walks over to the door, he, he opens it, he sees the dark staircase down into the basement, and he goes, Jesus, since you're there already, can you bring the tomatoes up with you? <laughs> now, what we do with our fear, though, plays an interesting role in our life, doesn't it, fear? I find that some of us are biologically hard, hardwired to do one of two things, you know. Filled. When we're filled with fear, we either, we either fight or flight. And this is, you know, this is good. This is something that we, we've done for, for a long time as human beings, and it's kind of kept us alive. You know, it's a good thing when you're out in the middle of a forest and you hear a weird sound, not to go, let me see what it is, but to instead run home. And there's times when you do need to stand up and fight and defend yourself. But when I talk about this with fear, I think many of us fear a lot of things. We fear that our bodies will decay. They're not gonna work like the way they used to. We fear that our relationships are gonna dissolve and break down and maybe be non-existent. We fear that we'll, we'll lose our house. We fear that we'll lose our spouse. We fear that we'll lose our kids. Or we fear that we might not measure up in our job. We fear that we might be exposed as a fraud. Fear takes many different places in our life. And I see that we do either one of two things. We either fight it. Like if we fear that our, our kids might one day die, we, and we don't want our kid to die, and so we become the parents that are constantly hovering over their children so they never can experience the playground, they never can experience going outside, they don't make new friends, they don't do any of those things. Because what if, what if they're gone? What if something terrible happens? And so I'll just hold my kid right here and I'll never let him experience life. Because if he's experiencing life, that might hurt him. And so I'll fight every little thing around him. No, you stay away. No, you stay away. No, you better back off. I can't lose him. Well, sometimes we flee. You have that, that relative who's 
hard to deal with in the holidays. So you just don't even show up. You say happy Thanksgiving and you don't show up. Maybe when we need hard conversations to be had, we get filled with this fear. What if, what if it goes wrong? What if I say something I shouldn't say? What if, what if I share the way I need to share and they just totally abandon me and walk away? So instead of having the hard conversations, we'll just flee. We'll avoid the person when we see them. <laughs> this is not the approach of the Christian. We're not called to fight the fear. We're not called to, to flee the thing that makes us fearful. We are called to face the fear with faith. So we have a, a different approach. Because we have this unique understanding that our fear ultimately is based in our control. We want to control the things around us. We want to control the people around us. And so if I'm fearful that my kid might pass away and die, I'm, so I'm going to hold them. I'm going to try and control every little thing around them, the friends that they can have, the things that they can do, the places that they go, because that's my control. As long as I have some semblance of control, I will fight as long as I can. Or I'll flee from it. Because I ultimately can't control that thing or that person or that thing that I fear. So I'll just go away. But friends, I want to tell you that fear ultimately, it feeds into that need to control. But control is an illusion. Because eventually we'll realize that we can't control everything. Bad things will happen one day. It's inevitable. So we can't just run away from the things that give us fear. And if we choose to fight every little thing that's going to take away some of our semblance of control, eventually we'll find that we're too weak and we can't do it. So we are called to face our fears with faith. We are called to put our trust in a life-changing truth. We have to take all of our what-ifs, whatever they might be, if we get struck by lightning, or the bus is late, or if I die, if I get sick, if I get hurt, if I get bruised, if I get beat up, if I get torn down, we have to work through the what-ifs to get to the what is. And scripture offers us a really profound truth. Isaiah 41, verses 9 and 10 says this, I have called you back from the ends of the earth, saying, you are my servant. For I have chosen you, and I will not throw you away. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Psalm 23, we read it just a little bit ago from Sarah. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for what? You are with me. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20 says this, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. John 14, I am with you. I give you peace. Do not be afraid. There is a profound truth over and over and over again that we get in Scripture that no matter what happens, no matter what hard thing, no matter what trial and tribulation, no matter what crazy thing happens, God is with you. We live in a God is with me world. That is the truth that we have, no matter what you might face. Trouble will abound. Bad things will happen. You will suffer, but God is with you. God will lead you right up to the valley of the shadow of death, and he'll lead you through it. And he promises to be with you. 
I love what Psalm 23 says. It says, for you are my rod and my staff. If you know the, 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 the illustration there with the shepherd, the shepherd uses the staff to kind of guide the sheep along, but also there's a rod. Because guess what? Sometimes the wolves show up and you need to smack the wolves. That's what God promises for you. Promises to be there with you, to guide you as the shepherd, to defend you from the really big things, the hurtful things, the hard things, the things that you think might absolutely tear you down and break you down and destroy you. Whether that's your fear of death, your fear of loss, your fear of your identity, whatever it might be, we kind of We think that we can just continue to fight. We can continue to flee from it. But no matter what, we have this promise that he's with us. King David in Psalm 3, verse 3, he writes this. But you, O Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory, the one who holds my head high. So King David is, is describing this, this shield, and back then they had these, these big, large shields that would go from your head all the way to your feet. It would kind of be this, this circle that you kind of step into, and you were safe as long as you're behind the shield, as long as you, the enemy was in front of you. No matter if the arrows came or if the spears came or the sword came, you were safe, and you're especially safe when you had other brothers there with you in this kind of circle protecting you. But the one time, the moment when you're not safe is when you turn around and go that way, because now your back is exposed. So David is writing this illustration, you are my God, you are my shield. And the guy who wrote Psalm 3 is the same guy who wrote Psalm 23. You are with me. So we take comfort and solace in this fact that no matter what happens, it's all going to be okay. And we know it's all going to be okay because we've seen the Son, Jesus Christ, who's come into the world. The one who, who, who took on flesh and humanity, endured all the things that we did, were tempted beyond what we could imagine and yet did not sin, but yet they nailed him to a cross and he died and he went to a tomb and he rose. So Christ has conquered all of the things that we're fearful of. All the things that we think might, might hurt us and ultimately destroy us, they have no power. There's no power of sin in your life. Christ has defeated it. Will you struggle with sin? Will there be terrible things that happen to you and that you also do? Yes, but the promise is that there is no power because Christ has taken it away. Christ, who has gone and then t- literally taken on death, that he put to death, death with death. He has taken away the power of death. Will you die one day? You certainly will. Hopefully peaceful in your bed many years from now. But it might not be that way. But the power of death is taken away. Christ took that away. The devil is alive and well. And he is trying to tempt you and lure you away from the truth and promise of Scripture. He's trying to pull you away from Jesus. But Christ descended into hell. And he waved the banner of victory. The devil has no power over you. And the one who takes away the power of sin, that takes away the power of death, takes away the power of the devil, he promises to walk with you. He's not left you or abandoned you. He is with you to the very end. Jesse and I, we, uh, we adopted a, a dog about a month and a half ago. A one and a half year old red lab filled with energy. So much energy that he gets like hyped up and he runs and the kids just create more energy. So, of course, you know, we have an almost, you know, about three-and-a-half-year-old, almost four-year-old, and two-year-old next week. And, of course, when they get crazy, Bo gets crazy, and he just wants to, ah, and he starts to kind of kind of nip at them a little bit. And we're trying, we're in managed classes, so we're trying to get rid of this. 
And that can kind of be a fearful place for a kid. What if the dog does bite? What if the dog does scratch? What if the dog absolutely bow, back, just plows Haley over? So maybe there's some fear about what the dog could do. But when dad has the dog on a leash and he's holding the dog there, there's no fear with those kids. Because they know that the dog is in the master's hand. Sure, the dog might bite, might scratch, might drop blood. But it won't destroy them. It's the same way for you and me and God. Are things that we fear, the problems in our life, the trouble and tribulations, the things that bring us so much fear that we want to just run away from it? It is a dog on a bigger chain, held by the master of it all, the one who breathed life into this world. So we have nothing to fear. What are you afraid of? Are you afraid to die? Are you afraid of a gruesome death? Are you afraid that, that the economy will crash? You'll lose your house, your, your car, everything. You're afraid that you're going to be exposed? Are you afraid that some sin's going to come to light and everyone's going to look at you and go, man, that guy. Whew. What do you fear? And if we really believe that God is the one who holds all things, sustains all things, Ultimately, what do we have to fear? Because no matter what thing you fear, even if it were to kill you, looking back 10,000 years from now, we'll look back at that moment and it'll just be a passing, fleeting moment in the grand scheme of eternity. And we can trust the God who is faithful in the beginning is faithful now and will be faithful in the end. Maybe you struggle, though. Maybe you hear this and you go, man, I get it, okay. I'm not supposed to fight, I'm not supposed to flee, I'm supposed to face my fears with faith and trust in you and know that God is with me, but... Josh, how do I do it? How can I really do, do this? There's one simple thing. You're probably going to slap me. It's so simple. There's a simple practice that we can do, and that's to pray. See, something amazing happens when we pray, when we're just having dialogue with God. It doesn't need to be elegant. It doesn't need to be this, this, this beautiful language. But what happens when we start to pray, when we start to, to give it to God, we start to, to, to open up, we start to, to vomit all the feelings that we have with our fear, all the things that we think are ultimately going to, to break us or hurt us or destroy us or somehow how kill us, we can finally give that to God. We can release it to him. And when we release it, We put it into the hands of the one who can do something about it. The hands of the one who made all things, sustains all things, and he promises to bring you through it because he is with you. So we release our fears and we reorient our hearts onto the one who literally moved heaven and earth to come into this world to die for you. To pay the price to rise for you the one who is one day going to come back again and raise you anew. And so we pray. I love what C.S. Lewis says. He says, I pray because I'm hopeless. I pray because I'm helpless. I pray not to change God. I pray to change me. Our prayer is not to, to change God. He is unchangeable. Our prayers are so that we would release our fears, reorient ourselves and trust that no matter what happens, he's with me. 
that it's all going to be okay. So my encouragement, my prayer for you today, face your fears. Trust that God is with you. He'll walk you to it. He'll walk you through it. Even if it destroys you, it's all being made new. Everything's okay. You have nothing to fear. Amen? Amen. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God who has found us in the midst of the crazy life filled with trials and tribulations and heartbreak and broken things. And so, Lord, those things can bring us so much fear. But you promise to bring us to the valley of the shadow of death. You promise to give your peace the way that, the, the, that you give peace. It's not like the world, it's unending, it's forever. It's a peace that you want on the cross. And so, Lord, may we lean into your peace. May we trust in you that no matter what, it's all going to be okay. You are with us. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We pray this in your great and your beautiful name. Amen. Amen.